Good afternoon, everyone. This is Christian with PerfectStockAlert.com, a 100% free service for smart investors and traders. All we ask in return, please refer a friend. Today we're going to be looking at the definition of earnings before interest and taxes, also known as EBIT. As I do in each one of these tutorial videos, I'll give you the actual definition, then we'll move on to look at some examples and give you a little more insight. EBIT is an operation, operating and profitability measure analyzing a company's earnings ability. The interest and taxes of a company depend a great deal on a company's capital structure management's decision on whether to fund a business with debt or equity. Because companies can change their capital structure without much difficulty, metrics which are not capital structure neutral make it difficult to compare one company to another. Because EBIT excludes interest and taxes, EBIT is capital structure neutral and is therefore a more appropriate way of comparing the earnings of different companies than by comparing net income alone. The formula, and we got the tools right quick, is quite simple. EBIT or earnings before interest and taxes simply operating income plus other income. To find EBIT or earnings before interest and taxes, you're going to be looking at the income statement, and I'm uh, looking at the income statement from McDonald's right now on Yahoo Finance. You can find its information anywhere, including Google Finance, MSN, your discount broker will have it. You'll be able to find it within the company's annual report and so forth and so on. So you can find it almost anywhere, and it's free. Uh, scrolling on down on the income statement, about halfway down, let me go ahead and move down here. Uh, you will find, get this right, okay, we got the old tools. Okay, here's the operating income. You add in the other income or expenses and you get left with earnings before interest and taxes or E B I T. Alright? Okay, before we get in all into this, I want to clarify something. Uh, there's a lot of people out there uh, consider operating income to be the equivalent of earnings before interest and taxes and they'll use them interchangeably. Uh, that's actually flawed and it's at least sloppy. What it, they're basically saying is that it's the same if other income is zero, which in this case it's not, and in many cases it won't be. And even if it was zero, it's still not actually the same. Operating income is not the same as earnings before interest and taxes. The formula is different. Uh, so you should take that and uh, just memorize that earnings before interest and taxes is a, a step further than operating income itself, okay? Earnings before interest and taxes is a good metric to use to see how well the company earns money from doing what it is in business to do to begin with, its operations. If a company is losing money at the operating level and is only positive at the net income level due to various non-operating items such as one-time events, uh, then investors need to look further into what is really going on before even considering investing. Generally accepted accounting practices or GAAP requires certain items to be deducted from revenue and gross profit in a particular manner. In a large extent, or to a large extent, and these are not discretionary. Therefore, it is more difficult for management to manipulate the income statement above the operating profit line, though not altogether impossible. Don't forget there's depreciation and amortization. People can toss in uh, some uh, discretion in there. And in this particular uh, income statement, we don't have that, but it is something that people should consider. Um, basically, the main point to draw here is that it's, it's easier whenever you're looking at the income statement for managers to uh, manipulate what falls down here uh, in this category here and here and further down uh, than it is above actually than it is above this area here uh, so just remember whenever you're looking at these figures and if you see uh, you have uh, earnings before interest and in taxes is a negative number and yet at the income statement on the very bottom in the net income you show a positive number there's probably some messing around going on in there and just designed to make it look better than it really, really is this right here is telling you how the company performs for a uh, just on its core let me clear that up at its core just the business itself so if the company that uh, is, is making a profit in its normal business activity and that's good if it's making a loss then why would you be buying this business to begin with because the stuff that they do after their other business uh, actually is profitable that doesn't make a lot of sense so that's one of the elements that you look at when you look at a company's income statement is what are the earnings before interest and taxes it's a more reliable number than uh, the net income a lot of times so just keep that in mind Earnings before interest and taxes can be used to compare uh, different companies amongst each other uh, to see how they, they fare. You want to do that within the same industry. Um, but, for example, you look at earnings before interest and taxes. You can see it uh, for the 2011, December 2011 annual uh, point here on McDonald's. You had an $8.5 billion. You can take this number here and divide it by the total revenue of 27. And what you're going to see is about 31%. Basically, that means... 
31 cents out of every dollar that the company brings in, the company gets to keep at this point. Uh, remember, we haven't gone through taxes yet, so it's something else to think of, but also interest. But uh, the main thing is that 31 cents on a dollar is uh, at, that, at that particular point there. So if we were to go look now at, so let's say we look at Taco Bell and compare uh, McDonald's uh, to Taco Bell, we would know that Taco Bell is owned by Yum Corporation. So let's go ahead and check out their page. Okay, here we are looking at the Yum brands, and we can see that the uh, actual, let me get to the right year. Okay, here we are looking at Yum brands, looking at the annual data and the on the income statement, and you can see, we got the tools again. Earnings before interest and taxes, 1.8, divided by the 12.6 total revenue, and you actually end up with about 14.9, uh, 15%. Uh, basically, you can see that uh, Taco, I mean, uh, Taco Bell is not as efficient at making money as uh, McDonald's is. So that's just something that you could look at and compare and say, okay, well, one is obviously a more efficient business model uh, than the other. Please take a moment to review our disclaimer. The information provided herein is our opinion only. Under no circumstances do any statements here represent a recommendation to buy or sell securities or make any kind of an investment. You are responsible for your own due diligence. To summarize, we do not provide investment advice nor do we make any claims or promises that any information here will lead to a profit loss or any other result. These videos are for educational purposes only.